All right. Um, first, I just want to thank you um, again for doing this interview. Okay. That's really a great story. It's really important to share. Um, so I just want to start off. Um, when and where were you born? When I was born? Yeah. I was born December 12th, 1930. That's also my birthday. Okay. Mm -hmm. <laughs> um, and where? Uh, what city? In Worms, Germany. Oh. That's a small town, I mean 60,000 inhabitants, and it's near Frankfurt, Heidelberg. Okay, so um, what was your father's occupation? My father's occupation was coffee import and delicatessen. Oh, what about your mother? My mother worked in the same office, oh. in the same just shop. Oh. Um, so what political party did they belong to? They belonged to the Central Party, which was not the German, not the Nazi Party. Right. So it wasn't, so can you explain the party a little bit? Because there was like 30 of them or something like that, so. But uh, should I talk about the Nazi Party or about the Central Party? Um, yes, the Central Party. Central Party was a religious party and uh, they were mostly Catholics. Right. So I, I assume your family was Catholic? That's right, yes. That, that makes sense for us. And uh, they were very much Catholics. My two sisters, my father's two sisters were in the convent. Mm, wow. So, and my mother was very religious. Um, so can you also talk about the Nazi party as well? What? Can you also talk about the Nazi party as well? Yes, well, the Nazi party were actually, there were 44 percent in the last election that were held. There were 44 percent of the population voted for the Nazis mm -hmm. and 56 percent voted against them. What year was that? What? Uh, what year was it? That was 1933. Oh, right. Um, how was your family before Hitler became chancellor um, in 1933? They were very rich. Very rich? Yes. And uh, they supported Jews financially. Oh, really? I like have. Yes. For instance, uh, my wife uh, immigrated uh, from Germany uh, at the Kristallnacht, mm. which was a crystal night, yeah. which uh, they smashed furniture and windows and uh, really treated Jews very badly. But usually the Nazi party was so powerful that most people who could emigrate it, mm -hmm. like my wife did. And in the Kristallnacht, we paid for her passage. She and her mother were first class passengers. It cost $484. Oh, that's a lot then. It was a lot then, unbelievable now. And uh, so we paid for that. And uh, at the Kristallnacht, which was 38, mm -hmm. they were on the steamer oh, so to okay. Mexico. And then they came to America through Mexico? What? Then they yeah, came to America through Mexico, Mexico where a Jew was like, had like a really like messed up nose and he was big and he looked kind of ratty, like something like that. You would see on the streets so worms. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yes. And would have it for other minority groups as well? Mm hmm oh. Yeah. Okay. Um, 
And so, obviously, you said that your parents were disgusted by Crystal Knox, so they obviously didn't like this propaganda either. What? Were your parents, um, you said before your parents were disgusted about Crystal Knox. Um, so, how did they feel about the propaganda? Probably the same? Well, they felt the same way. And, uh, well, they didn't believe in Nazism. Right. But they couldn't do anything because they're just... No, they couldn't do anything. Yeah. Because, you know, they were easily killed. Right. So if they spoke out, they could have been imprisoned yeah. or killed. No, they couldn't, they couldn't speak out. Mm. I oh. mean, they, they could, but they didn't. Right. Um, so when, once World War II broke out, how did your family react and how did they get involved? Because you, whether you liked it or not, you were involved. Yeah, well, we were involved uh, with rationing. Rationing? Rationing. Okay. And uh, otherwise, the first two years of the war were comparatively pleasant because we occupied every country like France and Holland and Denmark which were supplying the, the Germans with food and uh, so we had a relatively pleasant life and then it started to turn and the, <coughs> the last two, three years of the war were terrible. I mean, we lost three houses in the inner city where I was born. I was born here. Yes, and that's Bernard Koch. Was that your father's shop? That's the father's house. And we had three houses, and they all burned down oh, wow. on February 21st, 1945. Oh. 1945, so the war. That was, was over, yeah. almost at the end of the war. Right, so, so I guess your father's um, business kind of went down a lot, right? Yeah. Um, so you, did you lose, did you, you said your family was wealthy, so they lost a lot of their money, or they lost all of it, or? But we lost all of it. Wow. And my father took it very badly that he suddenly, he was a rich man, and suddenly he was poor. And he took that very badly. Right. Yeah. Um, do you have any siblings who have older siblings? I have an older brother who is seven years older, mm -hmm. and he was in the navy, in the German navy. Right. Did he? I mean, what you say about your family is that they didn't really support not, uh, the Nazi movement. But how did your brother feel about it? Did he feel differently about it? Than the rest of your family? I don't know. No? I don't know. Right. That's the funny thing. I don't know and I never ask him. I should should ask him. Because that's funny. We never I mean yeah. we had a good relation we have a good relationship. Mm -hmm. But uh, I never discussed that with him. Right. That's so funny. Um, mm -hmm. It's like it's been like seventy years. Like eh, never mm -hmm. talked about it. Yeah. Um, so how did how did the break of World War Two affect worms um, after? How did the break of World War Two affect worms? Not just your family, but the whole town. Well, eighty percent of it was destroyed. Oh, wow. 
So it affected. It affected the town pretty badly. Yeah. Uh, uh, during the actual time that they were killing people in 1942 and 1945, did you were you guys aware of what was going on in the concentration camps? Or did you know they were around or anything? Uh, we knew they were around, but we personally didn't know that people were killed. You just knew that they were just being replayed, resettled? No, uh, they were concentration camps and they were kept inside. Mm -hmm. Were you, did you live by any? Or did, no. you, did you live by any? No. No? Did you, there was any like concentration concentration camp um, um, ca not campers um, people who walk through the streets or anything you just like you never saw them mm -hmm. no? yeah okay um, so my father tells me the story of when you were 14 you were walking the streets in Germany and these two SS soldiers this came and yeah, well, off. can you just tell me not, story? not the soldiers I have to correct him. That were not the soldiers. No, that were not soldiers. That were the Nazi uh, Nazis who took us from the street, mm -hmm. put us on a lorry. Everybody who was fourteen mm -hmm. and a half years old, and put them to the front. Wow. And. Uh, because that was in March and that was probably the end of the war mm -hmm. if Patton would have had enough gasoline to go further but he stopped because he did, didn't oh. have gasoline oh. oh yeah I deserted yeah. The I, mean, Hitler also, Jugend. yeah. I mean, the Patton would also be interesting, so if you like it. Yeah. Show. Well, Patton had to stop at Metz, mm -hmm. which was about 150 kilometers from our town, mm -hmm. and uh, because he didn't have gasoline. Because if he. The Germans were practically defeated if he could have gone on to Germany. But he was delayed. But he was delayed. So what exactly, when you got there with a group of the young boys, yeah. and also was old men as well? And it was old men, 75. Oh, wow. And uh, young boys, 14 and a half, because the other people, we are all killed. Yeah, everyone in, in Russia. In Russia, it was was terrible bloodshed yeah. from the Germans. So what exactly? So who was like? There was an officer in charge, I guess. And what did what? He, what did he tell your group of people to do? Like, what was your? What well, I said, you have to continue the next day and dig holes to. And you get guns and you stay there and defend the country. Oh, so. Yeah. So, how long were you there until you And uh, so I went AWOL. How, um, how long were you there before you went AWOL? I was there about 24 hours. What made you decide to just go AWOL instead of just sticking around? Well, it was night and uh, that was the only time where I could do it. So you took the opportunity? Yeah, because otherwise uh, they would have shot me. Right. And uh, so I, I, at the night I ran and I found a driver of a lorry oh, wow. whom I knew oh, so that was because he was from Worms. 
Germany and I went to, back to Worms. So he took me back to Worms and I went back to my bed and slept and I never told my parents about it. So where, so how long were you gone? I was gone about 20, 24 hours. Oh really? Yeah. Then you just gone? And did they know where you were at that no, time at all? No. No? No. And you never told them? No, just... I never told them. Oh wow. Um, on. So did they ever try to get you to come back? Like did, was there any like Nazi, did the Nazis come back and try to get you back to the front? No. No? They just left you alone? No. The rest of the war? Because that's in the, about three, three weeks later, mm -hmm. the Americans came in and oh. I went underground for the three weeks, you know. Right. And <coughs> in addition, we had the bombing raid where 80% of the town was destroyed and everything was, no, they didn't know where you were. Mm -hmm. So, it was in disarray, the whole thing. How did everyone feel after they captured the city, I guess you would say? How did everyone feel after they were like, oh, war is, we kind of lost? Yeah. So how did, how did everyone feel about that? Yeah, they felt very friendly against the Americans. But uh, then we had two years of hunger, about 1,200 calories a day. Do you know about calories yeah. it takes for 2,200 yeah, to survive? And uh, so we had to work my mother was in the hospital because she was malnourished because she gave all the food to me because i was growing up 15 years right so and so well that that was a hard time so did your family re like rebuild their shop and their business did your father ever rebuild the business yes they did, but we didn't have anything to sell. Right. So how long did it take him to like fully rebuild it? It took him about six, six, seven years. Right. Six, so basically into the fifties. Right. Um, So someone asked me to ask you this, um, from the beginning of the war until the end, what was the best thing that you saw and what was the worst thing uh, that you saw? The best thing would be if I saved some lives like my wife's life because of the contributions that we made. And the worst thing was that uh, the fire bombing of the town and uh, they had, I forgot the name, I repressed it right now about the explosive they used in the Vietnam War. What what was? Um, what explosion explosions did they the, use in the Vietnam War? In the Vietnam War, they used liquid Lipon. gasoline, some bombs. Mm -hmm. Well, you are too young to know. Okay, mm -hmm. but I mean, like I know about the Vietnam it, War, yeah, but, but uh, Napalm. Na Nepal. That's okay, so that's was. it. Yes. Exactly. Thanks, and Nepal bombs were used in 42, in 45 they were developed and they were tested on us. Oh. 
and the, the terrible thing was that if you got napalm on your skin, you couldn't, you couldn't remove it because then you burned. Right, so it would burn your skin off? Exactly. Oh, and, and it would, like, that was like in yeah. I, like Hiroshima, right? Yes, and uh, yes. exactly. And that was the cries of the people who were wounded are still in my ears. Oh my gosh. So that's, uh, that's awful. That's an awful thing. Wow. Um, when did you finally immigrate to America, and what was your motive? When I emigrated three times, in other words, I crossed back into Germany three times. Yeah. And then I applied for citizenship and uh, because the ideas of America I like. What makes you like the ideal, ideals of America opposed to post-World War II Germany? What the difference? Yeah. Well, the Germans are stiffer, but uh, democratically they are fine, and I don't think that we will ever have another Hitler or that the, Not in Germany. Yeah. the, the German Nazi movement will take hold. Even if, it, even if there's like neo-Nazi movements in America, you don't think it's going to have that much power? Exactly. Okay. Um, 